How y'all doing today? Y'all doing good? Y'all look so lovely. So I want to have a conversation with y'all. Is that okay? All right. So have you ever woke up wishing you were dead? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm not alone. Okay. So you're laying in bed. You're consciously aware that you're awake, but your eyes are closed. And you're like, please don't be alive. Please don't be alive. Please don't be alive. Have you ever done that before? Then you wake up and you're like, oh, God, it's another day. <laughs> right? Or if you can't relate to that, have you ever felt like you were living life on autopilot? I mean, just living. You wake up, wash your face, brush your teeth, and all while doing so, you avoid looking in the mirror. You avoid looking in the mirror because you're afraid to see what your exterior really looks like through your own eyes. Many people see you as this bright, beautiful, intelligent individual, but you, nah, you don't see those things. What you do see when you look in the mirror is death, darkness, and pain. This pain hurts so bad, it keeps you in a trance. It's like a shadow that follows you into places and out of places. It leads you into bad relationships, provokes loss of self-worth, and offers substance misuse and suicide as an easy exit. Sometimes this pain is so dark, many become controlled by it and repeat the very same thing that caused them so much hurt to an innocent individual. This hurt, this pain, is living with the traumatic experiences of sexual abuse. Sexual abuse is like a storm that forms inside of you and destroy your innermost parts and work its way outwardly through your actions. Many victims are told never to tell anybody and they believe they have to suffer in silence alone, harboring guilt and shame that never belong to them. And they're not alone, because one in 10 children will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday. Their 18th birthday, if you look at your programs, you'll see a sticker on the front. If you do have that sticker, you will qualify as that one child. 40% of children that are sexually abused are abused by an older, more powerful child. 30% are abused by a family member, and 10% or less are abused by a complete stranger. Now, it just so happens that I'm able to check off every box on this list because I am a survivor of sexual abuse. When this pain is not handled properly in one's childhood, it transitions into their adulthood. So the question is, how did I defy the odd and break the barriers of sexual abuse? I have learned through my life journey when one confront the past of their past experiences and how they change them, they'll be able to grow. Like a hurricane has stages. I was able to overcome with these three stages, entering in forgiveness, and exiting positively. So entering in is like development in stages of a hurricane. Now I'm a Floridian, born and raised, woo woo, Florida, right? <laughs> Just recently we had some terrifying hurricanes, right? So Georgia, Texas, and a lot of, lot of other states were affected by this. So the developmenting stages of a hurricane, and something or someone will trigger this this suppressed memory deeply within you and cause a mental tropical disturbance. At the tender age of 10, I encountered my first sexual assault by an older cousin. That same day, I made the conscious decision never to tell or to remember, and I didn't. I didn't remember until the age of 25 when I was triggered by a simple bag of ice, which had been ripped open purposely so I wouldn't be able to get any. As each ice cube hit the ground, I instantly felt the pain in my chest like a tropical depression when thunderstorms began to form. Memories of this event flashed through my head like a tropical storm, and the symptoms that I began to feel as an adult, oh my God, 
Y'all, let me tell y'all, hatred, isolation, and anger. Entering in meant that I had to confront the little girl who never got help. Entering in meant being able to let go of the denial and accept that I was sexually abused multiple times throughout my adolescent stage. Most of all, entering in meant telling someone about the event and getting the help that I needed to transform into the forgiveness stage. So I have a question for y'all. Anybody ever suffered with forgiveness? Yes or no? Yeah, me too. It wasn't up until this point. I was like, yeah, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you too. But when I was triggered, oh no, mm -mm, I wasn't gonna forgive. Forgiveness was like trying to reach the eye of the storm. Oh my goodness. The eye of the storm is the most peaceful place where the weather is. But getting there is the hard part. Getting to the eye of the storm is like hitting the eye wall. The eye wall is where thunderstorms and gust, gusty winds form, debris, and things that we've seen that happen in Texas with Hurricane Harvey leaves these dark places. So what happened was I was so angry and I didn't want to forgive. I began to start isolating myself from the world. I had loss of sleep and I really didn't want to forgive because I felt like I was going to lose my identity. See, being a victim influenced a lot of my career. As a former child protective investigator, as a mental health counselor for trauma-focused therapy, and eradicating sexual abuse and helping human trafficking victims. So all of that would have been compromised, I felt, if I was to forgive. It wasn't until the latter part of my, my graduate program at Bear University when my classmates said, Jessica, in order to gain healing, you have to forgive. I was like, what? <laughs> they crazy. Who about to do that? Not me. <laughs> I felt strong not forgiving, but it was burdening me. It really was. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so what happened was I went to speak to my advisor, and she said to me, Jessica, your identity is not in being a victim. Your identity is in your faith and who you believe in because you are a survivor. And that resonated with me. In much conversation and, and getting the mental help that I needed allowed me to realize that it was better to forgive. In the forgiveness stage, I learned that forgiveness was more about my peace of mind than the person who actually hurt me. That enabled me to forgive myself first for the blame and shame that I harbored and forgive the individuals that had caused so much pain in my life to transition into the exit. Exiting. Everybody say exit. exit. Yes. Hurricanes may last a very long time, longer than we expect, but in the end, the sun begins to shine and the sky becomes clear. Forgiveness enabled me to heal and exit through the pain. See, inside of me, there was this hurt little girl that was just walking around. And when I was triggered, that hurt little girl became my outer shell. I was crying out for help. And once I forgave, that hurt little girl was no longer. I became this beautiful young lady. My positive exit is being able to help the children that have suffered in silence from sexual abuse. My positive exit has allowed me to help eradicate human trafficking with, with my program. My positive exit has allowed for me to be the voice for those who have no voice. So today I stand before you a victim turned survivor exiting. As a survivor, you will never forget what happened to you. You will not allow it to become your identity. You will defy the odds, and you will weather the storm. Thank you.